Live from the CBS Bay Area Studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Will you be here badly, Senator? New details tonight about the crazy corruption scandal involving this powerful Bay Area politician. Drugs, weapons trafficking, an ex-gangster, and a whole lot of cash. And the accusations are absolutely stunning. Tonight, a state senator who had a good shot at being our next Secretary of State faces more than 100 years behind bars. Now, here are the main players. State Senator Leland Yee, Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow, a notorious former Chinatown gang leader, and Keith Jackson, Yee's political consultant. We have team coverage tonight, starting with Joe Vasquez, who has been on this story since 6 o'clock this morning. Joe? Liz, and it has been an absolutely surreal day, and especially in the courtroom earlier today, as we sat there and we saw State Senator Leland Yee shackles around his ankle, his face looking dejected as he learned about a litany of federal charges against him and the possibility, if he's convicted, that he could get a sentence of up to 125 years in prison. State Senator Leland Yee left the courthouse tonight with no comment. One of the Bay Area's highest ranking politicians now finds himself facing public corruption charges as well as charges related to selling weapons. His attorney says his client will plead not guilty. Does he say that he's innocent? We'll always, as in every case, enter um, not guilty pleas and then the case takes on a life of its own with discovery being provided, motions being made, uh, sometimes a case ending up in trial. Beginning early this morning, the FBI conducted a series of raids across Northern California, eventually arresting more than two dozen people with crimes ranging from selling drugs and weapons to murder for hire. Basically, he's being accused of trading political favors in exchange for money. KPIX5 legal analyst Melissa Griffin says the charges against Yee stem from his failed run for mayor, which left him owing money and he needed money for his current run for Secretary of State. He's trying to ret retire this $70,000 in debt, and it seems like around that time, he and his political consultant yeah. embark on this campaign to retire it. And so they begin asking people, among them federal undercover officers, for money for that fund. The feds say Yee discussed the possibility of acquiring weapons, including shoulder-fired missiles from the Philippines in exchange for campaign contributions. He's also accused of offering to pass medical marijuana legislation, again in exchange for campaign donations. The feds accuse him of accepting $10,000 in exchange for the senator's support of a contract for a health care-related business. And Yee is even accused of selling a state proclamation for cash. Court documents detail many of Yee's conversations with undercover agents, including one where Yee said he knew an arms dealer with contacts in Russia and Ukraine. Senator Yee said, quote, Do I think we can make some money? I think we can make some money. Do I think we can get the goods? I think we can get the goods. And the senator left the courthouse just before 7 o'clock this evening after posting a half a million dollars bail. Among the conditions of his release, he can only travel within the state of California, Liz, and he is not allowed to possess any weapons. All right, Joe, thank you. Well, this investigation stretches across the Bay Area and Sacramento. Federal agents spent the day pouring through Yee's house in San Francisco's Sunset District. Agents loaded large boxes and computers into their cars. Agents also wheeled away box after box from Yee's office at the state capitol. You can see they confiscated a lot of stuff. Now, this was a scene in San Mateo. FBI and IRS agents left this suspected marijuana grow house with quite a haul. Agents removed several boxes and we saw these high capacity light fixtures typical of grow houses in the garage. Right now Leland Yee is holed up in his San Francisco house. He went home right after appearing in court. Normally he's more than willing to talk to us tonight. Nothing but silence. Other big player in all this, a man known as Shrimp Boy, Raymond Chow. He has a long criminal past, murder for hire, drug trafficking, arson, racketeering. He has been on the FBI's radar for quite a long time. Now, Linda Yee has been following Shrimp Boy's story for years now. Linda? Well, Ken, Raymond Chow is a notorious Chinatown gangster who terrorized this community for years. He extorted money from merchants and from gambling parlors, and he threatened to hurt anyone who didn't do what he wanted. 
Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow always reveled in his notoriety, admitting to me in an exclusive interview eight years ago he was a violent criminal. I have hurt people a lot, but those people, I believe they deserve it. He also showed me the ankle bracelet the feds forced him to wear after he got out of prison on oh, gun running charges. Uh, he was on. angry he had to report to Immigration Weekly and that they could track his movements. Everything Raymond Chow do is wrong. Everything he didn't do, we're going to put it on him anyway. In today's affidavit, the feds say Shrimp Boy asked an undercover agent to see if Senator Yee could help get that ankle monitor removed. For years, Shrimp Boy has insisted he's gone legit. Now he's the leader of the Ji Gong Tong, a Chinatown social club, and hangs out with political leaders like Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom. Last August, he was with Senator Yee at a restaurant ribbon cutting. He brags about his good deeds and how he's been recognized with proclamations from Assemblyman Tom Amiano, Mayor Ed Lee and Senator Yee. But the undercover FBI agents who infiltrated his alleged crime syndicate say, in reality, Shrimp Boy was laundering money, selling stolen arms, and contraband cigarettes. And San Francisco police believe Shrimp Boy was behind the still unsolved murder of businessman Alan Lerone, the former Tong leader who Shrimp Boy replaced as leader of the Tongs. Chow remains in a federal jail cell tonight. He did not get bail because, Ken, the feds believe he is a flight risk. Wow, interesting case. Linda, thank you for that. KPIX 5 political insider Phil Mateer joins us now. We heard Leland Yee allegedly making uh, a lot of promises. Does anybody really think that he can pull any of this off? Well, that's a big question because the first part about selling favors or trying to get people in touch with us, folks in Sacramento, they have that down. The second part about his, uh, or his promises to connect uh, these agents with gun dealers and with drug dealers, well, that might be a case of something right out of the movie American Hustle, where the, actually he and his campaign Sir, consultant were out to hustle these course. guys for some money for Lin Yee's Secretary of State campaign, only this time they were hustling federal agents, and when you do that, they don't say stop, they say dig deeper, dig deeper, here's a shovel, dig yourself into a deeper hole, and that's what he might have done. Yeah. And one of the indictments does include the fact that cash was exchanged, $5,000, for a meeting with this mysterious unknown weapons dealer. Exactly, and if you have the money change hands, then there's the crime. Uh, well, I just real quickly though, we were talking about the money, $5,000, he was $70,000, this is not a lot of money. No, it's not. It's not a lot of money for a life, it's not a lot of money for a career, but if you're in politics, sometimes it's like being at the roulette table at Vegas. You don't know when to leave, you don't know when to let go, mm. and in this, for just some campaign money, he has put his entire life in jeopardy. All right. Phil Matera, thank you. Now, ironically, Senator Yee has been a major advocate for gun control, and in that role, Alan Martin got to know him very well. Alan? Well, as two years ago, I reported on what gun control advocates call a huge loophole in California's assault weapons ban. While the senator then championed legislation to try to close that loophole, if what federal prosecutors now say is true, Yee was on both sides of the fence of gun control and weapons trafficking. You don't want to have uh, allow the bad guys to be able to have a weapon that will continually shoot out bullets. That was Leland Yi talking with me in 2012 after he'd watched our investigative report on legal assault style weapons in California. Those guns are legal because of what's known as the bullet button. A device that allows a shooter to quickly swap magazines on AR-15 and AK-47 type rifles while still abiding by California's strict gun control laws. Because of our report, Yee introduced a bill calling for a ban on the bullet button, telling me... This is not an easy issue. I'm a father, uh, I'm, I'm an individual who really wants our communities to be safe. And uh, God forbid if somehow uh, one of these uh, weapons fall into the wrong hand. After the bill failed, Yee reintroduced it in 2013. Today, many gun advocates are pointing to what they say is true hypocrisy. The government affidavit says that in August of 2013, at the same time that Yee was pushing gun control laws, an undercover agent was being told Senator Yee, quote, had a contact who deals in arms trafficking. And in January of this year, Leland Yee himself allegedly told that same agent the arms dealer, quote, has things that you guys want. 
The affidavit also says Yee claimed to know a weapons trafficker who he had known for years who was supplying cargo containers of heavy weapons to Muslim rebels in the Philippines. In the newsroom, Alan Martin, KPIX 5. He has been in politics for over 25 years. Now he joins the list of state senators, all Democrats, accused of behaving badly. Ron Calderon is accused of taking bribes. Ron Wright, Rod Wright faces voter fraud charges, and tonight, reaction to Yee's charges was fast and furious. And yet this indictment is sickening. I want to, on behalf of my colleagues today, call on Senator Yee to resign. On behalf of our constituents, and we're offended because we're here every day to do an honest day's work. That's shocking news uh, to me. Uh, it, it, it's uh, many years of public service, so I don't know what's occurred there. Just last week, the Society for Professional Journalists gave you an award for his efforts to strengthen government transparency and open records laws. All right, the final piece of this puzzle is a guy named Keith Jackson. He's a political consultant and a former San Francisco school board president. Tonight, he's being accused of being the middleman who brought all these players to the table. Now, parts of the criminal complaint read like a spy novel, and you can read the whole thing Page by page, 137 pages in the affidavit. Go to kpix.com.